Welcome guys to this new season of The OC Show and that's the season 3 and we are here on live on Overclocking TV on Twitch. I am Truthman from Overclocking TV. This is Timothée Xiala hey from guys. Overclocking TV as well. We will be managing all the live and this time here with me and we have our first guest for tonight. Uh, that is uh, Gavin, Gavbon from the UK at player.net. Uh, how are you doing Gavbon? I'm good guys and how are you two? It's very going good. well here. We had some uh, very tired actually. I have to. I have to be honest. <laughs> we had some slight issue before starting the live because it actually we are at the campus party right here in Brazil, and there was the first full power outage of the weekend. That was actually quite impressive. Like everyone started screaming and then clapping and so on. So the for two days uh, for today's show that's going to be the first one of the year, the first one for season three. We had a successful year uh, last year and we will start again for 2016 with all of these new topics. So let's see what we will have. First of all, we'll have the editor speak, so that's something we, uh, we liked or we didn't like during the week. And as well as the, uh, all the latest news regarding OC Esports competition update. That could be who is uh, going there and what are the competition you could participate in, in the now and in the next few weeks. Uh, we'll also talk about the HW Bot World Tour 2016. That's exactly where we are now. That's going to be the first stop, and we will be talking a little bit more about that. If you want to have all the information, stick around, of course. And Gav Gavbon, you are here with us to talk about the UK event coming in a month, the big freeze, and we'll have plenty of time to discuss what will be there and how that will be working uh, for you. And of course, to finish, we'll have a discussion regarding our expectation for 2016. Uh, 2015 was awesome, how does uh, 2016 looks and we will have a lot of time to discuss all that. Oh yeah, yeah, that's, that's definitely like this. So let's jump in. Uh, Timothée, I didn't ask you, you're okay? Tired? Oh yeah, I'm very good. Uh, besides being tired, everything is alright. <laughs> Perfect. So for you guys watching us right now, don't forget that you can, you can ask us some questions on the live chat. It's always a pleasure right here. And if you're new to this and it's the first time you see us because we end up somewhere on Twitch or someone shared the, 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 the show with you. You can always follow us on our live chat and we will be live actually all these next few days for the next uh, three days. We'll be live from here, the Edge of Robot World Tour 2016 in Latin America. First topic of the, uh, of the show, the like or dislike news, the editor speak. So, Gavbon, what was your uh, editor speak for uh, this show? Well, it's mainly to do with DDR4, really. Um, since you know x99 came out and z170 um intel's chipsets not amd's um so there's been new companies coming to the fold um and one of them is a company called king max um they've been around since about 1989 i think it was um but they're not very wide they're not very mainstream the likes of crucial um hyper x and but um, it's interesting to see a lot of new companies throwing the the hat into the memory market um Especially <laughs> Peter, <laughs> especially with um, companies like Clev, and now you've got King Max, you've got other companies coming to the forefront now, and the kits that they're bringing out are fast. They're not the stock bog standard stuff that you would have got previously, like the twenty one thirty three megahertz. Um, I mean, the the King Max are releasing a three thousand two hundred megahertz kit, so three point two gigahertz, um, which I, I think is interesting, and it should. Um, it should open the doors for a few more companies, I would say. Well, actually, King Max is um, is a company that I've been around for quite some time. Uh, I did saw some of their stuff uh, back in the few different computers that we did attend. And to be honest, uh, they usually have mainstream. Uh, to, to me, they have mostly uh, OEM and ODM um, no, products. So they do produce for others. And they were actually trying to go retail uh, to the customers directly. I think that was three years ago. But think that with this new coming of DDR4, they're actually committed to, uh, to go to the market. I, DDR4 is actually going more and more mainstream. Uh, there is the Aswell E platform uh, from Intel, the X99, uh, X99 platform that is um, using DDR4, as well as the new, um, as there was as the uh, Skylake platform. So we will see more and more of these um, of this memory DDR4 memory kits uh, coming on the market, and especially the one with the. Uh, <laughs> with the special, uh, with the highest uh, speed for that. Timothée, yours was about the Intel uh, Compute Stick. Yeah, so the Intel Compute Stick is something we actually had a look. Um, we had a look at it, I think, at Computex uh, this uh, last year. So Computex 2015, it was in the Intel suite in uh, 
in uh, in the Hyatt actually. And uh, so the the computer stick is that a uh, kind of HDMI dongle PC that you can plug straight to a monitor. Of course, obviously, it only has mainly a HDMI uh, port to connect to the TV, so a female HDMI plug. And on there, you also have uh, now you have also a USB port, uh, of course, updated CPU since then. Um, et cetera, so, et cetera. This is based on uh, an Atom CPU. Uh, yeah, this so, is so, low power. So the stick is running a whole PC pretty much. It's it's, it's a complete PC in a stick. Um, there's other vendors that did also their 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 version of the stick. I know Asrock did one, for example. Um, and yeah, it's it's actually really really cool. If uh, if you're someone that that is traveling and well, you don't really need a laptop for some things and you want to have, you know, always a, a clean windows for doing something or doing somewhat, I don't know what. Uh, this could be like a, a nice PC in your pocket that you... Well, you, you still need keyboard to. and mouse, isn't it? Yeah, 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 exactly. You, you still need a keyboard and a mouse. Uh, I would go for the Bluetooth solution in that case, <laughs> so you don't have extra, <laughs> extra cables. Yeah, that would be fun to see how the people can use this kind of uh, compute stick, and that's the, the, the name for that. Uh, on my side, I did choose the something that is not directly related to overclocking or hardware news. That's it's the, in French. It's in French. Yeah, but I will explain why. I will explain why. That is the today is the the data privacy day. So basically, it's the day to uh, bring everyone aware about uh, your pr the privacy of your data, about what you're sharing online or what you're doing online. Uh, as you know, there's a lot of uh, advertisement uh, talk and advertisement. Uh, discussion about like uh, how do you how can you track the, the users to to gain more revenue, and the reason why it was important for us today is it is important to know what how is your data used. Facebook posted some I think like 18 million uh, dollars of uh, re extra revenue of uh, for, for last year. This is insane, and they don't sell in product; they just sell your data. That's basically what they do. And I heard all the rumors that they want to uh, start implementing advertisement into WhatsApp as well. Something they say they will not do when they bought uh, when they bought WhatsApp. They so, always say that at the start, and then they're like, yeah, "Guys, uh, we need to pay for the bills. Uh, how should we do?" <laughs> <laughs> so it is very important today's the the data privacy day to be aware of what are your data being used for and what kind of data do you actually transmit to uh, to the site you're using. Um, and the reason why I was uh, I did select this uh, French website is called Next Impact, uh, and they're one of the no one of the major uh, technology portal in France. And okay, I, as you may know, Timothy and myself we are French, so that's why we we went to this one. And they announced that they will they will they will be stopping all the kind of advertisement using tracking, starting in the next few weeks. So they will have the time to implement that. So they announced that they stop tracking the user for the advertisement. They won't do any business anymore with um, advertisement company directly. They will have their own advertisement server to serve the advertisement to their users. So they just want to know what kind of um, of, uh, of where they are in the website, but not what you are used to do or the, no, every, everywhere else on the internet. What That's actually a, quite interesting. What is also really cool, because you were talking about privacy, it's also the HTTPS mode on their website, and uh, it's, it's for sure something we don't really often think about, but it's, it's pretty important in the way that at least, uh, even if there's no tracking, people could still uh, kind of kind of flare your way through, uh, through different routers and switch you're going pass through. So if you have HTTPS, they do know which site you connect to, but they do not know what you are doing on the website. And this, this just like Facebook has HTTPS or Twitter. Like all the big, all the big portal and big website have yeah. HTTPS activated it, now. It's, it is, it, it, it is, is pretty important. Normal, yeah. it the is only important. issue uh, with, with HTTPS is usually the, the price. Well, you need to pay for the certificates and no, it's, it's put a little bit more load on the server, but Overall, it's 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 a um, it's a win-win solution for everyone, the viewers and the uh, and the people. And I'm sure that they they also stop. They also say that um, they don't want to have any advertisement like video advertisement or you know stuff like this. So that was actually uh, quite interesting for them. It's a good move. Well done, guys. Uh, yeah, good job for that. Move. Oh, and uh, the, actually, I will uh, go in front of the questions. How do they monetize? They don't monetize by the advertisement. That's not the major part of the revenue. Uh, they have a subscription-based uh, system, so that uh, that's how they uh, actually do it. Well played. Yeah, yeah. that is definitely something uh, that is important to to check out. Okay, so let's move to the second topic of today. Uh, um, that's going to be the uh, overclocking competition at ocesport.io. There is a 
ton of competitions that uh, did happen in 2015, but 2016, what will be the major competitions happening right now? So, Timothy, what is the first one you want to talk about? Uh, so, okay, so there's a lot of competitions to talk about. Maybe I should start to take them in the in the order of, of start. Uh, so the very first one, it started on January 1st, uh, and it lasts for actually uh, nine months. Uh, this is the Skylake 5G Tweakers Challenge. This is something that used to be, uh, it's very similar to the SuperPi low clock, uh, 5G low clock challenge uh, that you can find off the forum. So th this is a competition by the community and um, mainly by the, the community task force at uh, HWBot. So you can uh, see it on the, on the front page of OC Esports, it's here. Uh, so this one, basically it's uh, limited to Skylake, you cannot go more than 5G. Uh, yeah, so it's all about all about tweaking. So it's really good uh, to follow this competition and the forum threads, of course, the discussions that go with it, because it's here you're going to eventually learn uh, the little tweaks that you are re required to know if you want to have any performing Skylake score. So pretty cool. Other competitions? That, there will be different stage in the in this five uh, five gear tweaker challenge, but the most important thing is for you guys that know how to overclock and maybe want to push more. Uh, you just started and you want to push more your systems like to know the few settings or maybe tune the memory stuff like this that's actually a good incentive for you guys to actually go check this out exactly so other competition as well going on uh, that started in the beginning of the year that's the old school is best school uh, so it started as well january 1st this one lasts for a month it's actually hey, finishing this weekend it's finishing on sunday now uh, yeah actually yes wow. we're already end of january holy 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 yes uh, <laughs> holy moly <laughs> holy i was about to say something we should not um so yeah season one two around uh, one the season one was actually pretty cool uh, this season two is already starting pretty well with 11 teams. So the old school is the best school is a team-based competition. So you're representing your team here. It's all about all hardware. Uh, every round is about something else, something different. So for example, here the stage one is about 3D Mark 99 whew, uh, with a slot yeah. A plus a uh, Reva graphics cards. Uh, stage two is PC Mark 04 all out, uh, etc. So I mean, it's it's really really fun this competition. That's where you see some some you know some good old gears uh, c uh, coming back to the surface uh, with some more modern ways of cooling. Sometimes you might see some even some CRT monitors coming out of the drawer. I, I do um, actually like the device that you have the the IDE plug that uh, transformed to a SATA connector because I don't think that many people have the uh, the IDE plug that I drive anymore. Yeah, no, so I've got nothing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> people don't even know what it is anymore, almost. Uh, so this is the competition Why? where... Why? SSD? If you have old <laughs> hardware, this is the competition for you, definitely. Um, I'm going to go to the schedule because it's actually easier to see everything that's going on. Uh, other competition as well that started in the beginning of the year um, is the Extreme Series uh, from uh, Asus ROG. So that's the OC Showdown Extreme Series uh, Round 3. So that's the end of the actual OC Showdown 2015. Um, Asus was, was waiting for Skylake to be adapted a little bit more to, uh, to hold this competition. So it started uh, January 22nd. It's going to end February 22nd. This is, a, of course, an extreme overclocking competition. So, well, you're welcome to participate if you're an extreme overclocker or an elite overclocker. There's some really cool prizes in this one uh, from various sponsors, among them, of course, Asus ROG, Intel, G-Skill, NMAX, um, their power, uh, EEP, ADB, USB-C. <laughs> I don't even know how you pronounce the brand. And Thermal Grizzly, of course. Um, so this is a cool competition. There's multiple stage. I will let you just check it out by yourself. Another competition that also started in the week just following that one is the Gigabyte Online, uh, the Gigabyte Z170 Winter OC competition, starting January 31st, ending February 28th. So this one, of course, uh, like all the previous competitions from Gigabyte we saw last year, is divided in different cat uh, categories or sub-competition. Uh, so you have a, a round one, with, uh, which is Ambient 2 core, round two Ambient 4 cores, round three Extreme 2 cores, round four Extreme 4 cores. Uh, so of course, again, in this competition, there's some sweet prizes to win. So there's some Gigabyte motherboards, Z170X SOC Forge, which is the Gigabyte um, flagship motherboard for uh, extreme overclocking or overclocking uh, uh, aficionados. And of course, there's some lucky draw as well for some cool motherboards. So check out this one. If you're a Gigabyte fan, this competition is totally for you. 
other competition going of course uh, the, the rookie rumbles yeah the yeah. traditional i would say rookie rumble by now so rookie rumble 27 already yeah we should celebrate when we hit the 100 mark um 211 overclockers in this one to show how popular this is still uh g skill is sponsoring the rookie rumble since the beginning actually since um december last year something like that or even actually october uh there's some ddr4 memory kits to win uh this is open only for rookies so people that have less uh, than three months uh at hw but uh, of course uh if you are a novice and you just graduated to novice you can attend the other competition that is the novice, novice nimble that one also started in january is gonna last for a little bit longer two months uh two months and a half actually 90 90 days i don't know how to calculate yeah me neither <laughs> i'm very bad at math anyway it doesn't matter because the novice nimble is still running uh, there's 36 days left right now in the lead we have hardware ready oc uh, from italy uh, overclock.net always going strong second position occr in the third position etc etc you can see the ranking i don't need to list everything for you um if you are a novice check out this competition make sure to join the team this is how you actually learn uh, competitive overclocking and uh, of course I didn't mention the rookie rumble AMD for those that are rookies with AMD CPUs yes yes there still are people with AMD CPUs out there this competition is for you and yes there's also some cool stuff in there so check it out well it is okay because if you want to uh, know more stuff about AMD and especially the comment that Timothy just uh, just made you can go on uh, the YouTube page of Overclocking TV and we had a tech talk yesterday with uh, Peter Massman talking about the adoption of AMD uh, CPUs. Um, let's move on to the next topic. This one will be quick because that's actually talking about the live we're doing all this weekend. This That is the HWBot World Tour 2016. Uh, this is the event organized by HWBot all over the world. Seven events, five continents. There's going to be one big championship, the HWBot World Series. And um, there will be a lot of you know, different stops along the way. So there's uh, seven events. The first one is here in Sao Paulo in Brazil at the campus party. The second one will be in South Africa uh, mid-March uh, at uh, in Cape Town at the Rage, uh, Rage Expo. I think that's the right uh, one. Yes, it's called Rage Expo. And it's the, there's two Rages. Uh, so like you say, it's the Cape Town one. The yeah, th there's the one, one. That's the one in Cape Town. There's one yes. in Johannesburg, but that's the one in Cape Town. Yeah. The third event will be in Europe uh, at the Gamers Assembly, that, that, like uh, it was last year. It's going to be a, a, a massive gathering for all the uh, European overclockers. Gavbon, are you planning to come there? Um, I'm going to try. Um gonna try and get there uh, maybe bring a couple of people with me um should be um should be great it's a shame it's not in the uk but obviously um <laughs> we'll touch more on that later but then um, it, it should be fantastic in france especially yeah because yeah. it's france it's always good you have good wine and good uh, cheese who who on the chat is planning to come to the world tour in europe if you are europeans of course uh raise your hand and if you are in a country you have the, uh, you have no ways of transportation, don't hesitate to use the forums because there are people always looking for a right chair next to you or somewhere next to you so you can come over together. I hear there's a nice tunnel between France and the UK, for example. So make make there use is. of this nice tunnel <laughs> <laughs> and uh, come see us in France. We have nice cheese as well. <laughs> so uh, after that, they will have the uh, um, Taipei events uh, during the Computex time. Uh, that's going to be, of course, in Taiwan. Um, this event is becoming a tradition. Yeah, th that, that's going to be like the, the mecca of, uh, of all the overclockers there. And after that, there's going to be an event in September or October, like early Q, uh, Q4. It's not yet announced, so I cannot uh, tell any more details about that. And the final of the championship will be in early December in Berlin at the Case King Bootcamp. So that's going to be uh, quite insane. So each of the event, there's a local qualifier and uh, the HWBot World Series, so for the... Um, for the extreme overclockers, they can compete in a local qualifier and they win a ticket to the final event. So one guy from here, Sao Paulo, will compete on Saturday to win the tickets to there. And everything will be live on OCTV, of course. It will be there for you guys. It's important yeah. to note as well that uh, Seasonic is a, is a full hardware partner for the Complete World Tour. So they are sponsoring all oh, of yeah. the events. So that's actually great. Uh, good job, Seasonic, in, uh, in sponsoring the, uh, the HWT, as we call it. And uh, although we, uh, we have the, um, 
uh, Tetra, the organizer of Computex, that is also uh, a sponsor of the Asia Bot World Tour 2016. Yeah, because this year the World Tour is indeed on Computex in the Nangang Hall, so <laughs> Maybe. I, I had no idea about that yet. <laughs> Oops. Okay. <laughs> leak, leak, leak. And everything, yeah, as I said, all the events will be live here on Overclocking TV. So if you want to have the information, just click follow button, the follow button on Twitch. You can always uh, follow us on Facebook as well to, um, to have more information. Right now, we already have a giveaway running on uh, for the live because we are here at the first stop in the Latin America. So if you want to win some awesome prizes, there is a Seasonic PSU, a P1000 power supply. There is Hyprex SSD, 120 gigs. And there is two of them. Two of them. Two of them. Yep. And there is three thermal flasks from HWBot, the limited collector edition. So if you want oh. to participate, you can go to overclocking-tv forward slash raffle. Raffle, R A F F L E. I want one. <laughs> well, you can always try to participate in the giveaway, or maybe if you go to the Europe event, you will get one. Yeah. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> okay, so that sums up for the HWBot World Tour 2016 kickoff. If you guys want to know more information, you just have to stick around after this OC show because we will be live for the next few hours, live from here, Sao Paulo in Brazil. And there's also plenty of information uh, at the top of HIBot on the HIBot.org website in the navigation bar. There's a world tour link. Click on it. All the info is there. This is how you grab your tickets. There's also three different types of tickets this year. There's the LN2 tickets. There's the water cooling tickets. And there's also the dry ice ticket for those that are willing to make the step but not yet. That don't want to pay the full price of the LN2 ticket. It doesn't stop you from competing in the Extreme World Series. So you have access to LN2 still in the final of the competition. So why not, you know? <laughs> if you want all the information, you can go to hwbot.org and all the information is right there. Next topic, the big freeze in UK. And that's why Gavin Gavban is here with us. So, um, in well, let's say. There's a lot of competition online, of course, we know that. And uh, we, yeah. we love to see more and more local events. And um, by the end of February, so that's going to be in a month from now, uh, you guys will be hosting the first, uh, the first event of the 2016 year in the UK for the first live event there. And it's called the yeah. Big Freeze. Can you present us a little bit more about the event? Well, the Big Freeze UK is all about bringing the UK overclocking scene um, together. Uh, that's essentially what it is. Um, there isn't any stable events. There isn't any consistency with any events that get arranged in the UK. They're every, you know, I think the last proper one was last year in Cambridge. Um, and there was nothing between then. So me and um, Lewis, or as he's known as Obscure Paradox, were talking. And we decided to um, to run to run our own event Um which coincides with Team GB, um, who, who obviously partner of the one in Cambridge. Um, but we're hoping to not only open up Sub-Zero overclocking to, you know, the overclockers that are already existent, like Top Dog and, you know, El Gapo, people that are big in the UK overclocking scene, and APAC as well. Um, but we're all hoping to be able to introduce new people to the scene as well, get get more people interested in overclocking, show them what it's about, teach them some, you know, new tricks, and um, teach them how to tweak efficiency. You know, it's all about it's all about community spirit, and you know that that that's something that I really really do value. And um, like you were saying, you've got the online overclocking. Um, with with hardware bot and um, HW bot, um, which is great. The forums are great as well, but the UK is slightly behind in overclocking when it comes to social events. Um, and having having meets like this, I think, will be not only great for the um, UK scene, but it will be also great for the world scene as well. Given that it's UK is a major country in Europe, so it does get a lot of exposure and attention as well. So hopefully. Um, it'll have a big effect on that and this will hopefully be the first overclocking event of 2016 and it certainly won't be the last which is great so th this is to actually trigger more of the uh, social and local uh, gathering rather than just uh, giving out with all the information on the forums because you want to have like a certain contact with the other guys yeah exactly yeah um, you know we want 
not that the rivalries between overclockers is anything to, to be worried about. It's more, it's more bringing about sharing. people together. Share, sharing yeah. is caring. So if you, if you share the stuff, and especially if you share directly on the same event, it's actually much more easier to do uh, to do this way. Uh, but you say that you would be like explaining, talking, and so on, and you bring new people into there. So what what are the targets? What are the target of uh, the the people you're targeting for this for this event specifically? Um, mainly, um, I mean, the, the, there's there's three types, in my opinion. There's three types of you know user. Um, you've got your general user who just check browse Facebook, and then you've got your enthusiast slash gamers who buy the hard buy the high end hardware like the ASUS Formula motherboards, and you know they've got the potential to overclock, and it's Getting past that boundary between the having the hardware and overclocking the hardware, because people do want to overclock. It's it's known. Com companies see this. Everything is is overclocking enabled. You know, you've got Intel's latest chips. You know, the new i3 6320. You you can overclock it. It's it's not locked as such. Um, but the thing that we want to do is break that boundary. We want to smash it with a sledgehammer. And um, and I don't know if that's the same for everyone else. And um, we. We, that boundary, I just want it gone. You know, there's, there's no reason why everybody can't overclock. Um, we don't want it. We don't want it to be intimidating to people. Because when you mention LN2 to people, they, they cower because they think of Terminator and the person shattering in a million pieces. It's, it's not like that. LN2 is. If you respect it, it will respect you. And. We will be giving a safety talk as well um, at the event to people who have never even seen LN2 before, because um, safety is just as important as over as anything else. Safety is paramount. Um, you need to know you to use that to have fun, because if you if you know hurt yourself, it's not fun anymore. And and exactly. Gavon, can, can you tell us uh, where that will be, when that will be, and how people can register for it? Um, the event is being held in Sheffield in the UK, which is quite a central location. It's, start, it's running from the 26th to the 20th of February. Um, we do have a Facebook page, which I will link in the chat now, if it will let me. Where, and, and, oh. <laughs> uh, no, the, the bot didn't let you post the link. We will, we will repost the link in the next few minutes. Yeah, um, you can obviously you can go on there. You can join. You can like the page. You can join the event. You can ask questions. Um, there is going to be free parking. There's going to be there's a room where people can sleep at the event um, if people want to sleep. Um, we've got a thousand liters of LN2 booked, and we've got some of the biggest overclockers in in the UK and the world, like like the Vape Pack, Obscure Paradox, Gavbon, um, <laughs> just to name a few. Um, just, just just to name you. <laughs> <laughs> just to name a few. <laughs> well, that, that's gonna that's gonna be a nice uh, a nice looking event. That's gonna be February 26 to 28. That's gonna be over the weekend, and that's gonna be I think uh, three four weeks before the Edge Robot World Tour Europe. So that could be a very good incentive for some people to as well come to Europe after that to the European exactly exactly perfect um, thank you Gavin for all the details and I think we can move to the uh, last topic of today I know that you have some things coming up after so we, that's why we are going to be closing the, uh, the show in the next few minutes um, I wanted to talk about the um, what your our expectation for 2016 first of all 2015 was awesome that was an insane year that was the first official HWBot world tour that was a massive success that was a lot of uh, live overclocking event and there was although a lot of um, I'm gonna say that a lot of online competition that were worth mentioning so for for 2016 Timothée you first what will, what are your expectations for 2016 uh. A massive explosion of overclocking all around the world. <laughs> no, actually, uh, so for for overclocking this year, there's gonna be a lot of stuff planned. Actually, um, it's gonna be um, it's gonna be the world tour. So this is really what I'm expecting to be uh, to be massive. Uh, so that's also mainly what I'm busy with every day since uh, a few a few months almost. Uh, so there's going to be seven world tour events. So a lot of overclocking and especially a lot of new overclockers. We have already more than 80 overclockers that are new, totally new to overclocking. They took on the workshop here at the campus party. And we expect to, of course, be beyond 100 tomorrow. It's going to be a huge one versus one final. Uh, it's going to be also um, 
yeah, a lot of very interesting extreme overclocking tournaments all around the world. Uh, this is the first time that there are live qualifiers in countries that are going to be live streamed where people can win a ticket to the finals. So it's going to be uh, pretty impressive, uh, interesting to see how that goes. So this is my main expectation. Can I have a second one as well? Sure. <laughs> so um, also this okay, year... Okay, thank you, Gavon. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Good damage every time. Um, no, so yes, uh, another thing is uh, that we will see, uh, I'm predicting that we will see a lot more overclockers benching live this year, uh, sharing their streaming sessions on Twitch or on other streaming networks, uh, YouTube, uh, Azabu, Azubu, uh, you name it, they're all, they're all possible. Um, there's going to be a lot of this and this is going to be interesting to follow because um, finally people will be able to see um, behind the scene of those overclocking scores how much time and how much effort uh, elite overclockers at first probably extreme overclockers uh, as well as regular enthusiasts put into getting their scores out. Um, they will be able to share tricks a lot easier for those that are able to watch the streams. It's going to be very interesting and most likely we'll see uh, the development of a new way of probably doing overclocking because, you know, when you bench by yourself, you're not sharing anything. You're just watching as your screen, unless you're taking notes for writing a guide. Um, you keep it all for yourself. And usually when you start talking about it and sharing, you know, that's that's it. So it's going to be pretty interesting in that way. That's yeah, I, I do actually follow you on uh, on some of the stuff I would de detail away. Uh, Gavman, what are your expectations in 2016? Um, pretty similar to Tim's. Um, Hopefully, you know, uh, it's on overclocking is now on the cusp. That hopefully that boundary is being smashed. Um, one concerning thing that I think that needs to slightly change, especially for this year, um, is the emphasis on the gaming brands. Um, I mean, MSI did that. I don't know if you remember the, the, when they brought out the um, the X Power. It's now the the gaming X Power, like titanium edition and. You know, Power, adding uh, Z one seventy A X Power Gaming Titanium Edition. Okay, yeah, that's the one. Um, now, obviously, it is an overclocking board, but I, I don't think it benefits the ethos of overclocking. I don't think it. I mean, it is. It's a good board, but I don't think it. I think having the separate boards, you know, dedicated for overclocking, really, it, it shows that. Overclocking is big. It, it's 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 fun. It's important. It, when you just merging it and slap dashing it all together, I think it, I think it deters. Well, we want to smash the boundaries the anyway. So yeah, I want to smash because the you can do overclocking on pretty much any kind of hardware. That's the thing. It's just the the, the amount of uh, of overclocking you will get, or the the amount of result you can the the the. the the stand of the result or the level of the result you can get is different, but you can do overclocking on pretty much anything. Oh yeah, you can. It doesn't it, overclocking doesn't have to be expensive. Um, the interesting, uh, my main expectation for this year is hopefully the return of AMD. Hopefully AMD can do something with Zen. Um, I'd be really interested to see that, um, especially on the um, you know, the, the CPU side. Um, it, I think. Hopefully, it will be a big year for AMD. Um, I mean, that, that that's pretty much it, really. AMD yeah. really need to... They've been if floating AMD, on an old yeah. platform. If AMD comes back to the race, that's going to be even more interesting because there's going to be something to compete against Intel on, on that segment. And we had a long discussion with uh, Peter yesterday on the Tech Talk live show. And if you guys want to go uh, see that, there's a lot of information, the stats from HWBot, the number of subscriptions, the CPU that I use and so on. You can go on the, our OCTV YouTube channel, Overclocking TV uh, YouTube channel, and you can find uh, in there that's going to be called Tech Talk, uh, talking about AMD and the future of Overclocking. Clicking. So, uh, if you want more information there, you can you can go there. Um, Gavin, in terms of uh, scores, do you expect a lot of world record to be broken in 2016? Yeah, most definitely. A lot, um, a lot. Yeah, there's going to be lots. I would say it's, it's already records. been quite a few since the start of the years. <laughs> the, the year, yeah. yeah. I, I I imagine there's going to be quite a lot broken on the hardware, but well tour as well. Um, because it is, people are gonna when you could, like like so. Hopefully, VV will break some world records if he can if he can get a good enough chip, you know, um, when when it when it goes to Cape Town. Um, 
That, that's for sure. Nice be, uh, that one should be uh, interesting to see. And I, I, I do expect uh, on my side to have uh, a lot of uh, live events. So there's already seven world tour plan, uh, planned. So this is actually quite big. That's more than double than last year. Uh, I do expect a lot of uh, people like you, Gafbon, and, and, the, and the people that love overclocking and they love to do that, to do more and more of these live meetup, live local meetup. Not even, it doesn't have to be international. It it'd have, to be, it'd have to be local because that's, that's where it matters to, to have people around you that do that the same passion and, 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 and live with that. And I will, I will go back on the point that Timothy said earlier, is that I do expect although a lot of the uh, top overclockers to actually start um, um, marketing what they're doing because the scores are good, but now everyone is used to the scores. The scores are extremely difficult to get and they take a lot of time to prepare. And the preparation is actually a complete adventure. It's a complete adventure for for them to prepare for testing each part of the hardware. It's a complete adventure to to result to to get the score and so on. And talking about that, we actually right now, right now, so so that oh, actually that it was, was actually few minutes, yeah, just, just few minutes ago. Sorry, yeah. uh, Doctor Wiz was doing a live stream on his uh, own channel. That's Doctor Wiz underscore OC on Twitch. You can go give him a follow. That that would be great. And uh, he was doing like testing the Samsung B die, so that's some kind of uh, memory chip. And he was explaining what he was doing, what settings was changing, why he was doing this. Um, and you, you can see his setup, his screen. You can see that he was using liquid nitrogen. You can see the temperature. That 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 is uh, fun to see. And he was explaining a lot about um, you know what he was doing and how he was doing it. So you can go check out his. Um, his uh, Twitch, uh, Twitch channel will post a link on the live chat so you can go give him a follow that I'm sure he will appreciate that and that's pretty much it I, I, I foresee a lot of world record broken uh, I do expect at least um, one record uh, one world, top world record will fall like every two weeks and yeah. that's going to be the bare minimum that's it's it it's going to be exciting it is already yeah. exciting so guys that, that is the end for the first show of the season three of the OC show. We will uh, catch you guys in two weeks. Um, so, Timothy, do we keep the, the planning every two weeks? Do we want uh, to announce everything today or we want to uh, let the people know a little bit later? For, for now, let's keep it every two weeks. I think it's fine. If we add more shows, it's going to be a more vi- uh, diversification of the show. So um, Maybe not the same time. Zone, maybe so you guys saw what we experimented with the uh, end of last year. Um, so there's something coming this way. Wink, wink. If you don't know what it is, well... <laughs> Subscribe to-, to our channel and you maybe see what's happening. Exactly, yes. Thank you, Gavon. You're very welcome. Good. I need to I need to fly out of that front door now. I've got a table reservation to get to. Um, but thanks for having me, everyone. And um, thank you, Tim. And thank you, um, Mr. Truth. Um, ciao for now. <laughs> you're welcome. See you, man. So, guys, if you're still here on the Twitch uh, channels, don't go away because we'll be live in the next few minutes with Fabio from Techmundo talking about the HWBot World Tour 2016 Latin America. We are here in Sao Paulo in Brazil. So we'll take a 10 minute break just to change the few settings and we'll come back right away for the live. See you soon.